coming up on City Spotlight. We're on location for a first-time episode on Danville. We'll sit down with Danville Mayor Ricky Williams Jr., who gives an overview of Danville on new and existing economic development, higher education in Danville, the many parks and facilities used in and around Danville, including a look at the reopening of the Fisher Theater. We're on location and we're talking for the first time about Danville here on City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com. And welcome to another edition of City Spotlight. As you can see, we are on location once again, and we have ventured into Vermilion County for our first episode on Danville. Danville, our 17th community here on City Spotlight. And we're going to cover a lot of ground here in this first episode on Danville. We're going to get an overview of, and the latest going on in Danville. And to help us out, we will welcome first time to the program, the Mayor of Danville, Ricky Williams, Jr. Dan Ricky, welcome to the program. Thank you, Ramin. We're really happy to be here and to have a chance to spotlight our community. Very good. As you can see, we're taping in the council chambers here at the municipal building here in downtown Danville. Pleasure to be here, Ricky, and we're going to cover a lot of ground on Danville, the town that uh, it's your hometown and uh, the community that you represent. Your first time on the program, can you tell our audience just a little bit about yourself, please? Sure, absolutely. So, uh, hometown boy, born and raised. I graduated from Danville High School in 1996. I then went to and graduated from Millican with a, a bachelor's degree in political science. Thought that I would be a lawyer, but instead ended up gra in graduate school um, studying public policy and urban development. Uh, so I was pursuing a PhD at Emory when I went on a trip to Africa, which changed my life. Oh. And uh, long story short, I ended up back home within a year. Wow. So some time away from Danville to kind of get your feet wet and figure out what you were doing. That's correct. What's it like to be mayor of your hometown? It's amazing. It's actually very humbling. Uh, you know, it's interesting because this has kind of come full circle for me. I was on our first ever um, Vermilion County Youth Summit. I was the chairman of that, gosh, in 1995. And it was then that it kind of that vision for being the mayor first was in my heart, placed in my heart. Uh, I knew that if being the mayor, you set the tone for the whole community. Right. And so I'm, I'm excited to be able to chance to, to, to set the tone because I feel like we're going to be able to lead Danville into great, great places. Maybe I should have mentioned this a question or two ago. Uh, you stepped into the role of the mayor's position. Tell us kind of your journey of how, because you came into the acting as the, the former mayor resigned. Sure. So I was a, a councilman for nine and a half years when our wow. former mayor resigned. And the council elected me to be the acting mayor. Mm -hmm. And then I won outright election in April. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've been serving in this capacity either as acting or actual mayor for about seven seven or eight months now. Very good. Uh, last question kind of about yourself before we dive into this community of Danville. How did the, all the journeys that you had outside of Danville, how did they help you here to what you're, what you're doing now in Danville? Sure, well, um, you know, when I left grad school, I actually became a residential missionary in Clarkson, Georgia, which is a ref wow. refugee relocation center. And I ran, um, a pro helped start and ran a program um, for after school program for refugee and American youth. And it was in a little three bedroom apartment. I had no budget and I, I made a whopping $100 a month. So I kind of worked as a secretary to actually pay the bills. And uh, just they are having to be able to work and, and to do a lot with little, I think, kind of helped set the stage. And I, I came home to be the executive director of the Boys and Girls Club and then the CEO of Project Success. And those, those instances of being able to uh, manage people and manage money well, I think, set the stage for me to be able to be in this position and be successful. Excellent. Great, great backstory on, on how you've journeyed back to Danville. All right, let's talk about this community that you represent here, and we're going to kind of do an overview of Danville here in the first portion, and then we'll go over some new things that are kind of coming to Danville. Let's talk about the location of Danville. You're obviously located in Vermilion County. You don't get much more eastern central in central Illinois than Dan in Vermilion County. Danville is located in the heart. You're the largest city and the county seat. That is correct. And also you have 
handful of roads that help lead folks to Danville. You have Interstate 74, you have a couple of U.S. routes, 136 and 150. So my question for you, Ricky, uh, talk about the strengths of the location and the roads that you have uh, here for Danville. Sure. What I tell people, one of the things that I love the most about Danville is that you know you get that small hometown feel but you have a lot of the amenities that you can have in other cities we have good restaurants good shopping and things like that uh, however if you need something a little more you know we're strategically located only 30 minutes east of champaign urbana mm -hmm. uh, the u of uh, chicago is only two hours north of us yes. indianapolis is only about an hour to the east so we are very well positioned within the region to, to be a, a strategic hub. As are a lot of communities in central Illinois that have that kind of that triangle of Chicago, Indianapolis, and for some folks, St. Louis, but. Sure, only three hours away. Yeah, so so we're, we're right in the midst of it. All right, very good. So location there for Danville, right here in central Illinois. Let's talk kind of a, a very broad overview because we're gonna talk a lot about a lot of new things that are coming to Danville in a little bit. Give us a broad uh, uh, overview of some of your employers here in Danville. Sure, well, we have a number of really large employers. Um, the VA hospital is one of them, of course, uh, which is right next door to Danville Area Community College. Those are two of our largest employers. Mm -hmm. um, OSF, um, the Order of St. Francis, our hospital system, right. they hire, they employ a number of people. But some of the ones that are, uh, are, are people don't know about, for example, are Automation International. They literally make the machines that allow people to make their products around the world. Uh, for example, um, you know, shoes, we ha they make machines that help people make shoes in China. Um, oh, wow. Watch Fire Signs employs several hundred people now, and you may have heard of them recently because uh, everyone's heard of Vegas, and Vegas is known for lights, right? Well, we actually are in the process of making all of the new uh, signs for the Fremont experience in Las Vegas. Oh, wow. So all of those are now Watch Fire Signs, uh, right, made right here in Danville, Illinois, just a, a mile from this place. Wow. Uh, you have uh, health care, as you mentioned. Uh, obviously, you have the uh, Vermilion County Administrative Building with the courthouse. You also have the Danville School District, so you have a number of large employers in mm -hmm. Danville. From government to education and, you know, medicine, manufacturing and warehousing, uh, even agricultural in the northern and western parts of the community, yes. I'm proud to say we, uh, we offer it all and we do it all here in Danville. Variety, for sure. That's for sure. And that's it, something that I think helps keep our economy healthy. Very good. Very good. You also have higher education, as you just mentioned, here in Danville. You have yes. Danville Area Community College on the east side of Danville. Tell us about Danville Area Community College and how that's an asset to Danville. Uh, it's one of the things that I think we're most proud of here. Uh, not only do they offer traditional associate's degree programs, but they also offer partners with other universities so that you can actually get your bachelor's degree through attending DACC as well. Um, in addition to that, they, I, I'm really proud they have a lot of adult education programs, such as GED programs, English as a second language. And the other thing that I'm really proud of that I think is somewhat unique is that we also do a lot of training for industry here mm -hmm. um, and preparing folks for that, especially uh, probably six years ago now, wind farm technician program that I think is unique. I think we might be the only place in the state that offers it now, okay. or if not, we're one of only a handful. Very good. We'll talk about Danville Area Community College in a little bit. We have some news about that for the future moving forward. Let's talk about uh, your parks in Danville. And one thing we've talked about here on City Spotlight is quality of life, things you can offer for the residents that live in and around the area. And you have, uh, according to your web Danville website, uh, over 20 parks in Danville area that are listed as pocket parks, neighbor parks, neighborhood parks, community parks, and regional parks. Sounds like, sounds like a strength to me. Oh man, it's amazing. We have lots of recreational opportunities. Uh, in town, we have neighborhood par parks. Um, you can play tennis, basketball, softball. Uh, those parks also host our recreational leagues. So mm -hmm. for softball, baseball, basketball, uh, football, it's pretty exciting. We have a huge soccer complex or we have hundreds of kids playing games every week. It's, it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, um, we have Historic Lincoln Park, which um, yes. houses a theater program. That's where our municipal band plays every week during the summer. Wonderful. We have just a lot of uh, great opportunities in terms of park and recreation. But if you also want to go boating, 
We have a river dock in Ellsworth Park right here in the heart of city. Right. And also uh, the state and county parks, Kickapoo and Kennecott Co County Park. Man, they're awesome. The Heron Boardwalk. Man, <laughs> there I could go on and on. If you want to <laughs> see amazing wildlife, Heron Park is the place to go. Bald eagles nest there, blue heron. You see otters. I saw wild swans. They just had had um, cygnets for the first time recently wow. there. Um, you name it, and you can do it here in Danville and Vermilion County when it comes to outdoor recreation. The tennis center, I mean, man, wow. we have lots of opportunities. Uh, Lake, Lake Vermilion, which we'll, we'll talk about here with some events that just recently happened there. What, what an outlet for folks there on the north northwestern part of Danville. That's fantastic. You see people boating there and fishing. Fishing happens year round. Uh, really excited. Awesome. This next year, we're going to be installing a pedestrian walkway across Lake Vermilion, and that's going to create a lot of opportunities for people as well. Fantastic. Uh, now we're going to kind of talk about maybe a few facilities and okay. then we'll talk about that list of new things that are kind of coming to Danville here in the sure. future. So we just talked about parks. I think a nice segue to that, Danville Stadium. A lot of great baseball history there. That's fantastic. The Danville Dans, we couldn't be prouder. They are actually having a really good season thus far. We've had a lot of num we've had a number of professional baseball players come out of that league. Right. But what I love is the history. When you go there, uh, you're seeing an old school stadium. It's actually been featured in a couple of movies, The Babe with John Goodman, and then A League of Their Own that starred Tom Hanks uh, and Gina and uh, a number of other people, yeah. Madonna, Rosie O'Donnell. Great uh, movie. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and a lot of that was filmed here. Fantastic. I have been in the, inside there and uh, an old WEAU program, Heartland Highways. I believe I did a story on the Danville Stadium there. Uh, great, great place. Definitely has that really cool old school feel. That's right. Fantastic. And just across the street, another facility that people come to for multiple things, you have the David S. Palmer Arena. That's correct. Uh, you know, we have a semi-professional hockey team that plays there. Uh, we also have other universities which uh, which do their practicing at our facility, which is pretty neat. EIU is one of them. Exactly. They have club team. And exactly. What else happens there? Uh, wow. Every year we have something that's coming up this weekend, actually. The Dust Bowl, I think it's in its 45th or 46th year. Oh, wow. It started in the park and it became such a large tournament that it's held there. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, ice skating. There's, uh, you name it, concerts. The annual Festival of Trees is held there. It's just a, a, a gem for our community. Fantastic. And I should have clarified to our audience at home, we are taping this uh, segment here with Mayor Williams of Danville, July 22nd, so third week of July. And not too far down the road, and just up the road from us, the historic Fisher Theater. Some great things have been happening there for a number of years, and will be reopening here in September. Tell us about the historic Fisher Theater, please. Well, it's over 100 years old. It was originally the Grand Old Opry House, and then for a number of years it was a movie theater. Well, unfortunately, over 30 years ago it was closed. Uh, for a long time it sat in a state of disrepair, but fortunately people had some vision, yes. and they held on to it, and they did enough to maintain it so now that it could be restored. Thanks to a wonderful gift from um, the, the recently deceased Julius Hegler, that com the theater has been completely transformed and given new life, almost $10 million in investments. And quite honestly, it's one of the most beautiful places that I've been in, especially here in the Midwest. They anticipate having over 220 events a year, wow. uh, public events that is, including uh, weekly movie showings, Great. concerts, uh, and theater as well. That might also become, we're hoping, the, the home of the Danville Symphony Orchestra. So that's still a possibility as well. Very good. You said it's over 100 years old. I think it said it was built in 1884. That is and correct. And you have an opening, re reopening, grand reopening date of September 21st. Is that's, that correct? That's right. September 21st, the Lettermen are going to be here performing. So, uh, For smaller communities, kind of as a follow-up question, for smaller communities or any community that has a long-time theater, and some, some are able to maintain them and some are not able for Danville to be able to bring the Fisher Theater back for this next generation of folks and your hometown, uh, Danville resident, uh, it's gotta be really exciting to have the Fisher Theater back be a part of the community. It is, it just makes me proud. You know, I have friends who run regional theaters in Missouri and, and Kentucky and, you know, in places that are much smaller than Danville and mm -hmm. the theater alone brings in, 
you know, hundreds of thousands and in some places millions of dollars of revenue. But then I think as importantly, you often see a lot of things pop up, such as new shops and restaurants that come around to support that theater. And I really believe that in the next five years, Danville is going to become an entertainment and recreational destination for people throughout the Midwest and through the United States. Kind of already have that started with all your parks. That's we'll correct. From the recreational side, so. But, I, but we're going to be doing a better job of marketing everything. You know, it's if you can have a great gem, but if you hide it, no one knows how brilliant it is. And I think it's time for people to see the beauty of Danville. Folks are seeing this at home in the latter part of August. So a little, little bit from now, the Fisher Theater will be reopening here in Danville, right here uh, uh, off North Vermillion. All right, let's kind of go through maybe a little mini rapid fire of some of the new things that are coming to Danville. Sure. We'll start east and work our way back west. Off Lynch Road there, you have uh, another hotel that's going to be blossoming up there off Lynch Road. Sure, um, and a Marriott Suites, which is going to be more of a long-term facility where uh, business people and contractors and anyone really can rent rent rooms that are actually going to be full suites with kitchens and uh, appliances and anything that you could need for a, for a longer-term stay. And it's uh, it's your first all suites hotel. You have you have several other hotels. That's correct. Right there off the interstate for folks to stand. But this is going to be our first all all suites and uh, over 50 rooms. It's going to be awesome. Fantastic. Very good. Staying right there in that Lynch Road area, very far east part of Danville, you have one of your businesses, Flex and Gate. Plastics is getting a major expansion. We're, we couldn't be prouder. They're actually going to be doubling, they're nearly doubling the number of employees wow. they have. So we're excited about the economic development that that will bring to our community. You have a lot of industrial out there, so that's one of those out there. It's great, great to hear that for Danville. Uh, you also have, uh, you can only speak to a certain degree, you have a multi-million dollar development that's in the works, so you can't mention really what it is at this time, but uh, give us whatever information you can at this time, Ricky. Well, by the time the folks see these, uh, this at home, it, will, it should be public knowledge, but uh, right. on August 5th, I should be announcing the creation of a new redevelopment, which will bring an $80 million investment to our community, as well as a host of jobs. Right, and also completely transform a, a neighborhood in town. All right, so this will be a couple couple weeks uh, announcement. Uh, be sure to check on where you can on that uh, for a big uh, development here coming to Danville. Uh, here, I'm going to kind of go through some more things here. The uh, former uh, Kmart building there, you have a Planet Fitness that's been open a little bit. Yeah, that's been great. Uh, it's interesting because, uh, you know, they are very competitive in terms of finances. So we've seen a lot of people, I think, join the gym that hadn't before. And it's a good use of a space. They also have indoor um, indoor storage facilities as well, uh, long-term storage. So uh, that's a good thing. So it's, it's two things, Planet Fitness and an indoor storage facility. Were they able to use the former building or did they have to start from scratch? There? They actually used the former building, which okay. is great, great because anytime you can infill, that's yes. better than having to, to build something new and leave something else empty talked a lot about that word that you just used there on our recent episode on Tuscola, being able to repurpose buildings. So That's very, right. Very good. The uh, now former five-star restaurant closed on June 30th, and that'll be a new Dunkin' Donuts there. Yeah, we're excited. You know, here we have uh, a good local donut place, but uh, I believe that the Dunkin' Donuts is going to be offering some things like drinks and sandwiches that we don't get currently. So okay. people are pretty excited about that. And as me and... Uh, Kelly, uh, helping helping us helping us tape the episode today. We're driving up here off the interstate. We saw the second the new location for the second location of Mad Goat Coffee. Mad Goat is just a complete gem. They are have their original shop on North Vermilion Street. But the neat thing about that unique thing about them, I should say, is that they not only they roast their own beans, they grind their beans, they do the entire process of making coffee. So what you're getting is something that's made right here in Danville, Illinois. It's delicious, and the new location especially is beautiful. I think it beats Starbucks by a mile. All right, good plug there for that second location of Mad Goat Coffee. Uh, a, a, a restaurant that is reopening here. Uh, it's been in Danville for a couple of decades. Tell us about the Heron Restaurant, please. Sure. Uh, it's a beautiful old building. It used to be a men's store, and so they have all of the old, um, the antique booths and things like in the, it's tons of beautiful woodwork and the metal ceilings uh, fine dining at it at its best we are excited to have that again and it just being down the road from the fisher we expect that they will complement one another well we also have the downtown danville event center just next door to the heron which is has reopened a beautiful space if someone needs to host a, 
a, a dinner party for any reason, if they have a graduation or uh, an, an anniversary celebration, it's the perfect space to do that. You've had a lot of uh, down events happen in the, in the downtown, as, as typical as for most communities during the summer, a lot of activity in your downtown area. The, absolutely, so I, what, one of the things I'm most proud of in Danville is we have a great music and theater scene. So every Friday we have, um, summer sounds and yes. there are different bands every Friday night in Temple Plaza and you usually have anywhere from 400 to over a thousand people down there just jamming out. I mean everything from Zydeco, you know, which is Cajun music for y'all who don't know, <laughs> to rhythm and blues, to, you know, 90s pop bands, anything. Wow. They have a little of something for everyone. Right. There are also food vendors and such. and. Uh, Downtown Danville Incorporated has actually done a good job the first Fridays of the month providing family-friendly events as well, activities for, for, for kiddos. Excellent. Very good. Uh, back over to Danville Area Community College. As we promised earlier, you have some exciting news about uh, a tournament that's kind of already been here for quite a while. Absolutely. So the, the National Junior College Tournament um, for Division II basketball mm -hmm. has been held here for over 20 years. However, we've done such a good job that they are considering making us the permanent home of wow. the NJCAA Division II Men's Basketball Tournament. And uh, that could not happen without all the local sponsors and volunteers. It takes hundreds of people to make that happen. And it's something that we're very proud of. And that happens, seems to be a very annual, consistent basis and will be moving forward. What, what kind of, you get some good foot, foot traffic coming into Danville for that? Absolutely. We estimate that, you know, that brings in an, an over a million dollars in additional revenue wow. for, for us because you have folks staying here for a week in our hotels, spending money at our stores, right. eating out at our restaurants. Uh, it's just fantastic for the city of Danville. It is a national tournament, so you're getting people not from here. That is correct. Very good. So we've gone through a lot of the new things. Let's talk about some activities. Uh, we're going to show a list of upcoming activities here at the very end of the segment, but a couple of things that just happened here in the first part of July before we're taping here. In fact, just before taping here on July 22nd, on the 20th and 21st at Lake Vermilion, you had some boat races. Tell us about that. Yes, so the Gayo Grotto hosted the uh, the, the national speedboat racing here in Danville on Lake Vermilion. It's the first time we've ever had such an event. And again, hundreds of people, um, actually, well, actually close to 100 people that actually raced. Wow. And then we had, you know, thousands of visitors who were here for that as well. So it was an awesome event. I'm really proud of the fact that they're donating the proceeds of that money to Ambux, um, who does a, a lot of good work for, for youth with developmental disabilities in our community. One of the many ways that Lake Vermilion is used. Very good. And uh, two weekends before we're taping here, so we've been the first part of July, it was the fourth annual Balloons Over Vermilion event that seems to be uh, building up some steam moving forward. That's awesome. This year we had 40 balloonists here from, our, I, I would say, around the country, but we actually had a couple people from Canada too, so we'll really? see from all over the world. Wow. And we had a record break, record breaking attendance there. Over 24,000 people came to see it this year, so it was fantastic. Uh, we couldn't have asked for a better event. This year they added for the first time a laser show, and I expect that that will be a recurring part of the event moving forward. Sounds very Balloon exciting. rides, helicopter rides, I mean it's just a great day for Danville and Vermilion County. And that was that was held at the Vermilion County Airport? That's correct, Vermilion County Regional Airport. And the date is set for next year's which will be the 5th, July 10th and 11th, 2020. So look forward to that. Yes. Ho hopefully we can come out there and check it out. We would love that. And uh, wrapping up our interview with you today here on this First City Spotlight on Danville, Mayor Williams, we appreciate your time. Danville is your hometown. And one thing I know you want to share with our audience at home, and you're very excited as you jump into your first full term as mayor of here of Danville, uh, you have your lowest unemployment rate in over 30 years in Danville. Uh, tell us how proud you are of that. Incredibly proud. You know, 4.5% unemployment is really good for this area, especially considering, you know, just a few years ago we were in double-digit unemployment. You know, we uh, were a factory town in our HEP Pass. We used to have General Motors, General Electric. When those places closed, it hurt our community tremendously. I'm proud of the diversify, diversification that we've had in our economy because now, um, like I said, we have everything from manufacturing to warehousing and medical, you know, educational, governmental employment here. So we are a much more well-rounded economy and I think that is reflected in those unemployment numbers that you just mentioned. Anything else you're excited about the near future here as you move forward with this uh, position of yours in Danville? Sure. I think the, the biggest thing is just making sure that we are great stewards of the people's resources. I always try to remind my team that the citizens don't work for us. 
we work for them. And I think that you're seeing that reflected in how we treat people. And I think you're going to see even more uh, folks locate here, both residentially and in terms of businesses as well, as a result of that. And I'm, I'm, I'm just excited. Danville is, has a bright future. And we've been fortunate enough to talk with the mayor of Danville, Ricky Williams Jr. here. We were able to get through everything on the list today. Quite a very full a lot of information here as we uh, tape here in Danville. The mayor of Danville, Ricky Williams Jr., we appreciate your time here on City Spotlight. Thanks, Ramin. Appreciate you very much. And we look forward to coming back in the future. As we wrap up this episode here on City Spotlight, let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Danville. Thank you for tuning in to City Spotlight. You can check out past episodes, including the one you're watching right now on YouTube. To check out recent episodes of Central Illinois Towns featured on City Spotlight, search on YouTube, City Spotlight, with the show number and the name of the town. Listed on your screen are the last five episodes of City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.